Now, as we said, today is a great day. And even the things I just named can, to be avoid those things, we need power. We need discernment. And it all comes from the same place, the Holy Spirit. Pentecost Sunday, this is the celebration of the New Testament church that always takes place seven weeks after Easter. That's why they call it the Feast of 50 Days. We are a Pentecostal church. We are not dogmatic with that. There are all kinds of backgrounds. I was walking my dog yesterday and got in a long conversation with the guy whose uh, wife is the principal of the school at the Catholic Church. And we got to talking about tongues and all this stuff. I said, hey, man, Catholics make great Pentecostals because they believe in miracles. Come on. And and we had a great conversation. And he was very, um, he he was not judgmental. He was a Jesus person, so we felt a connection. But but I'm so glad we're a Pentecostal church because did you realize that everybody was Pentecostal in the Bible? Come on, let's just get real. Every church, every person, there was no other thing until modern times. And when we get to church, get to heaven, everybody's going to be Pentecostal. Can I get an amen to that? So, so we are part of the New Testament church. The third person of the Trinity is so critical to the daily victory of every Christian. Now, there's so many places you could start when talking about the Holy Spirit, but let's start at the very beginning in Genesis. We often forget that the Trinity, the entire Trinity was represented at creation. Everybody was there. The Bible says in John 1, 2, and 3 about Jesus. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. The Holy Spirit was there. According to Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God brings order out of chaos, and he does it through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit manifest in holy moments all throughout the Old Testament, through the certain patriarchs. Troy was telling one of the stories of Elijah, and and, and Elijah, and that, that story, the Holy Spirit was showing up in these moments, but it was always temporary. And it seemed to be limited to certain people. It was not until Jesus came and began to speak about the Holy Spirit that it becomes clear that God was about to unleash the Holy Spirit upon the earth in a way that had never happened before for all followers of Jesus. In John 14, 15 through 17, and then verse 26, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And I will give you another advocate or helper to help you with and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Everybody say, it's not an it. It's a him. Say that. Uh, We always say that. The Holy Spirit is not an it. Because if you think it's an it, you'll try to manipulate it and use it. The Holy Spirit is a person. And he walks into this room every Sunday with us. And we honor the person of the Holy Spirit. It's hard to see it in that frame because it doesn't have a physical construct. But it is a person. It says the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. For he lives with you and will be in you. After Jesus fulfills his mission of dying on the cross, rising from the dead, before he ascends into heaven, he begins to set up the day of Pentecost. In Luke 24, 48 and 49, he says, you will be my witness to these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power on high. Then Matthew 28, 18, I'm just putting a lot of scripture out here. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. How is he with us if he's sitting at the right hand of the Father? It is because of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is how he is with us. 
Then the final instruction comes in Acts chapter 1, verses 1, chapter 1, 4 through 8. He says, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times and the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my what? Witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, my computer just messed up and I lost my place. Here we go. Uh, he will be with you and in you. The world will never accept the Holy Ghost because it can't see him or know him. But he, the Holy Spirit, his presence in you and around you, your awareness of him, your fellowship with him, this will become the key to your personal victory and the victory of God's church. Three things the Holy Spirit provides us. Number one is this, he will be an advocate. I love that. Advocate means a person who publicly supports or recognizes a particular cause. I like this, a person who pleads on someone else's behalf. Hey, I acknowledge today that the devil is my adversary, but I'm thankful today that the Holy Ghost is my advocate. Can I get an amen? The Holy Spirit has your back this morning. He is always advocating for you before God, before people working to open doors in your life, working to close doors of things that will hurt you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the Holy Ghost is on the job advocating for the people of God. You know, I hear people say, if I just had some help, right? If I could just get a break, I could do so many things. But when you feel you're alone, you get discouraged. That's what the devil wants. I'm here to tell you that you have a helper. You have an advocate at all times working by your side every second of every day. And that is the person of the Holy Spirit. The second thing he gives us that I love is he speaks to you only what the Father says. Ooh, is that not more valuable than ever? Don't ever ever underestimate that word, only what the Father says. You know, many people speak things to us, and often those are good things and God no question uses people to speak into our life we just talked about that for three weeks of who discipled you but we almost always has some elements of what they think which may not on occasion match up with what God thinks so not so with the Holy Spirit sometimes it's something we don't want to hear Because if you ever, like me, you go and you get into it without getting the full picture, and the Holy Ghost is going, stop, 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 you know it, and that is a horrible feeling. Because you've already invested in something, you're all excited about it, and then all of a sudden you hear that red light of the Holy Spirit blinking at you, and sometimes it'll go against what the masses think. But if we seek the voice and perspective of the Spirit, we will always be better off than following our own direction, our own what others think. The Holy Spirit can provide you prophetic insight into everything going on around you in heaven and on earth. That's what it means when he speaks only what the Father says. He is present in the heavenlies and on the earth. He is God's agent looking after us in the earth. You know, oftentimes we are tempted to panic when something unexpected comes into our life. We get the doctor's report. Something happens with one of our children. Something happens. And if, but if we know the Holy Spirit, we will constantly be looking to be filled and refilled and clothed with the Holy Spirit. Then we'll be aware of what's coming and aware of God's perspective in all situations and decisions that arise in our life. Can we get an Amen. Hey, I need my bag down here. I got a couple of little props that I'm going to bust out. Don't be afraid. There's not a snake in here. I know it's Pentecost Sunday, but um, 
I'm not going that old school. Amen? Now, what I want to tell you about is, you know, the Holy Spirit, the third thing it gives us is supernatural power. And we just got to get this, man. It's not normal power, right? It's supernatural. So, so we did this before. Why don't you just turn out all the lights for one second? All right. That's kind of cool. Now, when you become born again, your soul is in darkness, spiritual darkness till that moment. And when you finally come to that place and you repent, you say, Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as a Savior. The light of God's Spirit comes alive in your heart. Boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God is alive in your soul. And that's when that happens. But then as you grow, and the Bible talks about being clothed in the power of God. And then you begin to read the words of Jesus. Wait a minute, I'm called to cast out demons. I'm called to heal the sick. I'm called to do all these things. And then the fire of the Holy Ghost begins to come into your life. And it's like that. Come on. I like that. So we got, let, let's, let, let's do that again. That's, that's Pentecost Sunday right there. You got things popping in the church. Your spirit comes alive and you get full, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And so, all right, turn the lights back on. I'm going to lose them if I keep doing that. Come on and just applaud God for the Holy Spirit. He's awesome now. And so, I spend days thinking of these genius things like that. Just, I'm kidding. But hopefully, I just want you to remember it. I want, uh, the, the reason we do stuff like that, we say it all the time, just to make the truth more penetrating. I want you to have a visual in your eyes. And you know what? Paul warns us about something in the scripture that I think could be the greatest problem we have in the church today. You know, people in the mainstream of society, they speak the vocabulary of Christianity, and they still claim oftentimes to be a Christian part of the faith, but their life will no longer reflect that what he says it should reflect. And in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, this is addressed. It says, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, lovers, not lovers of good, treacherous, which means betrayal and deception, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here's what Paul says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And Paul says, have nothing to do with such people. That is a strong statement. And I thank God that he's still doing miracles at Rise Church. I am, and I don't want that to stop. And this is not meant to be a downer. But even on days like this, we have to realize we can do more. We can be more. And we need to lead the way in our community. The, the Pentecostal church is the power arm of the church in Rocky Mount. And everybody's good at different things, but this should be a place where the captives are being set free, man, where miracles should be happening. And, and you know what? All these things come through the power of the Holy Spirit. Has the church in America lost its power? Are we consumed with human issues and debate, meaningless talk, worldly things? Are we so caught up in the issues of the world, we've lost si sight of the fact, I'm not even a citizen of this world. I'm a citizen of heaven. Nothing else we do will matter unless the Holy Spirit is unleashed in these last days. A powerless church is a defeated church. And your power comes from being filled and clothed with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we engage in society. We let our voices be heard in the marketplace. But do not fight spiritual battles with natural weapons. Paul said, I did not come to you with persuasive arguments on Facebook, I came with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. That's what's going to turn this world around. 
You can argue with people all you want. But when they see the power of God, when they look at the drug dealer in town, when he gets delivered, when they see a marriage hanging by a thread get, res- get restored, that's a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Paul said, hey, I could argue with you. Nobody knew the law better than Paul. Nobody could argue better than Paul. But he said, I didn't come to you with that because that's meaningless. I came to you with a demonstration of changed lives. Yes, we need to do that. In Mark 16, 15 through 20, he said, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Is that simple enough? Our job is to preach the gospel, to get rid of the distractions and preach the gospel. And these signs accompany those who believe, he said, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, not me. And when they drink deadly poison, it will hurt them. Uh, It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Wow. Hallelujah. Now, what is the power for? Well, we heard it is to be witnesses for Christ in the earth. It's not just to have great meetings. I absolutely believe that because we embrace Pentecost, that it happened, the presence of God is more prevalent. I believe that. And that's not a knock on any other practice of worship because I've I've felt God in every style of worship. I felt God in liturgical forms and all that. I get that. God's bigger than that. But I think there's a mindset the Holy Spirit comes Yes, the presence is greater, but the primary reason is to be witnesses for Christ in the earth. That's what Jesus said. The power of the Holy Spirit is so we can fulfill the Great Commission. It's so we can be his witnesses in the earth. So so I guess if you were in court and you were trying to prove something, and you had all this circumstantial evidence, we had this thing, we had that thing, We found blood here. We heard he was seen on this video or whatever. But when you have somebody sit in that stand and point at them and say, I saw them do it. (laughs) I was there. That is the power of a witness. And that's what it means in the church. When the old preachers, you say, can I get a witness? They're saying, what I just read in the Bible, have you seen it in your own life? Have you witnessed the healing power of God? Have you witnessed the delivering power of God? Have you witnessed these things? So we take that witness in the house, and then we extend it out to the world. We go out into the world. Pentecost means you have the courage to share that witness with the world around you, the people that need to hear. And the Holy Spirit makes your words powerful and persuasive. A testimony always defeats a religious argument always defeats a secular argument because no one can argue with what you've experienced for yourself. It is time for the church to take the power of the Holy Ghost and go into the world and make disciples again and be his witnesses in the earth. And I submit to you, people have never been more open to the gospel. People are so vexed and so confused. They have no answers. You know, we watch these violent acts and we debate things, and, and I'm, not, I'm not minimizing that, gun control and all these things. We want so desperately to do something against this evil. The only answer is Christ. You cannot, you cannot govern the human heart. You have to, and, and again, those things have their place. I totally get that. And they are measures, but you're trying to stick your finger in a dam that's about to explode. The enemy is busy, but just like in the Bible, that can be the church's finest hour. Because people, I believe people are more open to the gospel than they've ever been. Because they know the other things they're trying are not working. Can I get an amen? The second thing it does, I like this one, guys. The Holy Ghost qualifies your gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7 says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everything, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, everybody say each one. 
a manifest of the Spirit is given. So everybody in this room has spiritual gifts in them. And I've told the story many times when I was at the beach and, and the church had grown from eight people to five, six, seven hundred. And, and, and I said, God, what do you want me to do next that will make it grow? And he said, well, the first thing you understand is we've already gone way beyond anything you could do. <laughs> it was like, I hear you. Because what had happened was the Holy Spirit had qualified my gifts at a level I could have never gotten to without him giving us the ability. And we would joke around, Pastor Jason and I, we don't know what we're doing. (laughs) But God was qualifying what we gave to him. He was taking whatever ability we had, trying to be a good steward of whatever. He could sing. I could preach a little bit. We were good with people. We were part of a great denominator, whatever it is. He took those things and he was able through the Holy Spirit to elevate those things to a place we could never take them. And that is true for every person in this room. Everybody in here has abilities, but they are so limited without the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit can elevate those things. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that is the great qualifier in life. He qualifies us to do things and become things and accomplish things that we could never have done if the Father had not sent him to the earth in the fullness on the day of Pentecost. Are you living with the awareness that God through the Holy Spirit has put supernatural gifts on the inside of you Use those gifts. And many times to release faith higher and believe for the Spirit to qualify you for more. Everything I'm telling you is released by faith. We can know it, but if we don't believe it and walk in it. And the third one is this, the Holy Spirit brings unity. So many differences in the world. Politics, music, passions, gifting, family makeup racial makeup, economic makeup. I love the diversity of this house. And hear me, church, only through the Holy Spirit can we walk in unity with God and with each other. Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. But it but it may benefit, that it may benefit those who listen. Now listen to this. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, which you were sealed with for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Become compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. We say it all the time, guys. Where there's unity, there is power. Where there is disunity, there is a lack of power. I don't care what it is, and it comes only by the Spirit of God. We must have a Pentecostal move of the Holy Spirit in the modern church and in this nation. If you believe it, shout hallelujah this morning. I'm going to invite the worship team back as I'm just going to end by reading the day about the day of Pentecost. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost came, we were all together in one place. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly, (laughs) a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on the 120 that were left. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So that is the event of Pentecost. But if you go to verse 37, here you hear the results. They're filled with the Spirit. They absorb it. Then they walk out into the streets, and they're just glowing with the presence of God. And they say, man, these people must be drunk. I hear them speaking in my native tongue. I hear uh, Elamites speaking in uh, this voice, and now they begin to recognize there are people speaking in languages that there's no way intellectually they can know the language. And don't miss the fact that Pentecost was the taming of the one thing the Bible says can't be tamed. That's not an accident. I will take over your mouth. 
and express that through the tongue. So when they all get out there and people realize, whoa, whoa, they're not drunk. It's only nine in the morning. Something else is going on here. And it says in verse 27, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off. That's us, church. Come on. There is not three covenants in the Bible. There's not the old covenant and the Bible covenant than the new covenant. They are a part of the same covenant we're a part of. We are the ones that were far off, the generations removed. But the power of God is still available to the church today. And the promise for you, your children, and those who are far off, for all of whom the Lord God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Man, in just a second, we're going to stand and sing and God's just going to fill this house with his glory. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. Remember that. When you get down and say, nobody's speaking up for me, the Holy Spirit is speaking up for you. He is always there. The Holy Spirit is your qualifier. You can do more than you've convinced yourself you can do through the power of the Holy Spirit in your career, in your family, in your relationships, in your witness. The Holy Spirit will qualify you to do things you can never do on your own. And he gives you power for freedom and to be a witness in this earth through what you say, through what you do, through what you pray and the words you speak. You know, there are so many suddenly moments when you're a follower of Jesus and they come through the power of the Holy Spirit. But remember this, get this now, suddenly does not mean instantly. They're two completely different things. The suddenly came after hours of waiting, days of waiting. So you're building for your suddenly today. God does things suddenly, but he doesn't speak out of a vacuum. He doesn't do things unless we prepare for him to do it. So today we're recommitting, not only God touches today, but we're recommitting to keep short accounts with God. We're recommitting to say, God, fill me every day. Every day, God, I want to be ready for my suddenly, God. I want to be speaking life and preparing the way and get ready for that suddenly moment where you do something supernatural. And God God is so faithful, man. When we were, we were in Chicago, I was going to give you something today. I was going to give you a fire Bible, and the devil got in the mail system. They didn't make it here. But they're coming. Amen? And God gave me a little suddenly moment. I, I was at that conference, and after this we'll sing, but th- there was so much faith there in Chicago. And we were talking, and I just said, man, I just feel like God is saying we need to step out in faith or something for the church. And Lisa said, I think it's probably the fire Bibles, because I was worried about the money. I mean, it's about $5,000 to buy 125 fire Bibles. And I said, you know what? I think you're right. So I go to the car. I'm sitting in the parking lot at Choco's Church. One, sending my notes to Johnny for next Sunday. I had to do that. But I called the lady and I left her a message. That was my contact. And while I was doing my notes, 30 minutes later, the phone rang and it was her. I said, praise God, she got my message. I said, hey, Miss Mindy, I think that was her name. I said, God bless you. Thank you for calling me back. She said, what do you mean? She said, I just left you a message. She said, well, I didn't know that. God just put you on my heart to call you about the fire Bibles. And I got very weepy. I said, God, thank you for a suddenly moment to just confirm. And he will do that, but suddenly does not mean instantly. We got to do our part. We got to do our part. Can I get an amen? If you're thankful for the Holy Spirit, can you just applaud God today and thank him? for his mighty presence here. Can we stand to our feet? Hallelujah.
I'm so grateful for a praise team that doesn't have any divas up here saying, lead us into the presence of God. Come on. And we're going to focus on God for just a couple more minutes. If you can hang with us, then we're going to dismiss. Father, just fill us to overflowing as we close these few moments of worship on Pentecost Sunday. God, this is not an event. This is a life. We're living this life. We're going to live our suddenlies, but they don't happen instantly, God. We recommit ourselves. Come on, just lift your hands right now. We recommit ourselves to daily be filled with the Spirit, to recognize we have an advocate, the Holy Spirit, to recognize the Holy Spirit can show us and speak to us what the Father says. Through the Holy Spirit, we can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. Through the Holy Spirit, our words have power. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Fill this church. Fill us as your instrument, God, to usher in your return in these last days through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's worship together.